morning left? I think so. Yay! I think we're live. <laughs> we finally figured this Facebook YouTube thing out. I haven't. I'm still, I'm like, we're not look. Me. Is hey, it? it's a learning pro process. That's why they call it practice. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Because you're practicing. Okay. Yeah. So, welcome back to the next edition of Monday Night Live. Yep. We are honored to have you with us this evening, and we hope that we can entertain you a little bit and educate you a lot of bit on the proper human diet, what you should and should not do, should and should not eat. Where are those oh, you comments? Have to here. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, there you go. All right. So if you know a friend or someone who's every time we go live, they're like, damn it, I missed their live again. Text them right now. Start a watch party on Facebook. Uh, go grab them out of the basement. Tell them to put down the video game and come up here and watch these two crazy, this doctor and nurse talk their crazy stuff. Here we are talking crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. Every Monday, right here, 7 Central Standard Time. Except yeah. the last week we weren't here. Yeah, it used to just be on Facebook, but we've got such a great um, appreciation for doing it on YouTube as well because there are a lot of people who are anti-Facebook. More and more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I understand that. Um we have to do we have to do what we have to do, but I totally understand people's stance on uh, having opinions about certain social media platforms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Real quick, some housekeeping for those of you who are attending the PhD virtual summit. There is good news, good news, and good news. Oh. <laughs> so the good news is we sold out, so we added another another block of tickets, and then the other good news is that we then sold out again that block of tickets. So now there's another block of tickets. Bad news is that tonight at midnight, Central Standard Time, that's it. No more tickets. That's the end. That's the cutoff. So if you haven't bought a ticket and you want to, it's $37. That gets you access to the three-day live event, and then you can watch it as many times as you want. After that, for a year, a year. What was I thinking making it $37? You're a good person. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, also, for those of you who've already bought your ticket or you're going to buy a ticket, your ticket, the actual link to the summit will be sent on Tuesday the 8th in the morning. And then you'll be able to set everything up, check your internet speed, read up on the times, the speakers, like all that information. You will get an email every single day during, during the summit with like an itinerary also get a program sent to your email, a whole bunch of information. So we're trying to make this as user-friendly as possible. And there's also going to be help staff. Uh, yes. If you have a question, there's going to there's going to be a question button or something. So if you're like, hey, my audio is not working, you can literally ask a question and chat with somebody. Yeah. And they'll, there's they'll a help, help desk. You. There's a entryway that has like, you. it's, I can't even really explain it, but there's pictures and stuff in the first email that kind of get you acclimated to the environment because it is virtual. Yeah. But it's going to give you kind of the experience. Yeah. Of it it kind of looks like you're in a lecture hall. Yeah. Yeah. And then, oh, okay. So, like I said, you'll be able to watch it as many times as you want for a year. Keep in mind, it takes time to get the live videos uploaded and put on there. So, give us some time. But once they're uploaded, you'll get another email that has an on-demand button, which will give you access to replay each of the speaker's presentations. So handy. We've done a great job. Sorry, I've got notes here. I'm trying to make sure. I think that's it. Is I think it? that's all. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about common mistakes that people make uh, that either they just it's an honest mistake or somebody tricked them. Uh, and then they're making a mistake and they just don't know better. And th I think these apply to, to people who are brand new to keto, to low carb, to carnivore. But I also, there's a lot of people who've been doing keto a while who are making some of these mistakes. So we're going to go through somewhere between six and 20 of the most common mistakes, depending on how much time we have. And how much time you spend talking about each one. You mean how much time I go into explaining in depth yes. so that everyone understands precisely? Yes. You're hot. You're so passionate. You're hot. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> okay. All, All right, right, guys. So what's the first mistake, Dr. Barry? I'm going to let you pick. 
Since, oh, yeah. So oh, oh, oh. we've got a bunch written down. But which one do you think that's just the uh, for the for newcomers for old timers? What's um, just the most common mistake? Eating can, too many carbs still. Yeah, and there's two ways to do this. Uh, well, there's more than two ways. There's many ways to do this. So one of the first ways is to is to count net carbs instead of total carbs. And I'm not against counting net carbs. If you're losing weight and you're getting healthier and feeling better, keep counting net carbs. But if you stall, or if you're not, if you if you think you're doing keto and you're like nothing's happening, I don't really feel any better, then you're probably one of the people like me who needs to count total carbs. Mm -hmm. And you too. You didn't know it for a while, but once you started doing it, you're like, oh, yeah, this is really better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's effectively easier mathematically because you can, you don't have to say, okay, let's say subtract the fiber, subtract the, no, you, if, it's a, if it's a carb, it's a carb, you count it, and that's it. And then you can set a, an amount of total carbs, whether right. it's 20, 30, 40, or 50, and that's, that's your limit for the day. And then you eat as, as much protein and fat as you can and stay under that level of carbohydrates, that's a great way to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one way that people can eat too many carbs without realizing it is the net carb thing, because a lot of the products that are keto labeled aren't really that keto friendly after all. If you look at the ingredients, there's wheat, yeah. starch, yeah. sweet, like some of them even have sugar in them. If you go watch my keto products video that I have on my YouTube channel, there's several products that still have sugar in them. And so on the front, it says two net carbs, but when you turn it over, there's more like 20. There's a significant difference oh, yeah. in carb count. And for some people, they can still get away with the net carbs. But for a lot of people, if you have any kind of metabolic disorder, autoimmune disorder, if you're over 50, if you're a woman, we tend to be a little more sensitive to ingredients. And so that stuff starts to matter. Uh, especially, did you say autoimmune? I did. Yeah. <clears throat> and so that brings me to, and then, well, the second way that you can be eating too many carbohydrates, and this applies to the old timers, you've been doing keto for a while, is carbohydrate creep. And you start off doing really good, and you're like, well, I'll just, I'll have a, a pickle. It's no big deal. It's a little carb. And I'll have, well, I'll have this little fat bomb, and I'll have this here. And then before you know it, you, your plan was to eat 20 total grams or less a day of carbohydrates. You're eating 30 or 40 or 50. That's called carb creep. And every so often, you need to go back and look at everything you're eating with fresh eyes and go, okay, I know I added pickle. That's a gram of carb or two grams, whatever. Or onion or, or garlic. Right, exactly. All of those type of things. Yeah. Start Although happen. they're completely natural, one ingredient foods, and we're not opposed to them, but all the carbs count. All the carbs count. And that brings me to mistake number two, which is – and this is where people trick you. If it fits your macro. Right. That kind of ties in to what we were just talking about. Exactly. So you've heard about all these keto bread, low carb bread, or you've seen all the, the, the slim fast keto or the keto bars or keto shakes that this company or that company is selling. And they're like, you, you flip it over and you read the ingredients. You're like wheat germ, uh, dextrose, uh, soy isolates, yeah, the, the Ulti bread actually just has wheat in it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's wheat bread it's wheat with bread. more fiber. Yeah, they, yeah, they up the fiber so they can lower the carbohydrate count. But if mm -hmm. you're counting total carbs, still, see that they didn't trick you. Then it immediately becomes not low carb bread. So if you're eating things like that and you're not having any inflammation, you feel great, your joints don't hurt, your, your energy level is great, you may be one of the people who can eat those things. Lucky but, you. Yeah, for, or unlucky you. Eventually down the road. Right, exactly, right. Over, yeah. But if you're like most of us, you're going to do better if you mine the ingredients just as much as you mine the carbohydrate count. It's a big deal. And so if something's got wheat in it, no, that's not keto. I'm sorry. No grains are keto. No sugar is keto if it's added sugar. But, I mean, you have to remember, these are companies that are here to make money. Yeah. Good marketing for yeah. a way of eating that supposedly you can't have any bread, but here's this magical keto bread. Yeah. Obviously, that's going to sell. Sure. I mean, literally, when it first came out, <coughs> you couldn't find it at Aldi. Every time it came in, it was gone within hours. Yeah. Why? Because that's good marketing. Oh, you can't have bread? No, yes, you can. Look, it's magic. It, it says, says keto. keto on the front, right. but wheat on the back. 
So. Oh, that's like a bullet. Keep it on the front, weed on the back. Ooh. That is good. Yeah. All the red is mullet. the bullet of that's a, yeah. That's a tweet right there. As soon as we get off, yeah. <laughs> if you don't follow me or Nisha on Twitter, we're there. If you yeah. don't follow us on Instagram, we're there. I'm more on Instagram than Twitter. I don't remember. Yeah, every now and then she jumps on Twitter. We're on. What else are we on? We're on Parlor. Yeah. We're on Facebook, TikTok, obviously. Facebook, Facebook, YouTube. I have um, a Facebook page. He has a Facebook page. I have yeah. a channel on YouTube. He has a channel. Like, you're yeah. on his channel. On I'm YouTube. on LinkedIn. So I'm not. if you want to be all businessy, we can say hi to each other on LinkedIn. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. What's the so, third one? So let's see here. Not eating enough fat. Yeah. Being afraid of fat still because yeah. we've been brainwashed basically our whole lives that yeah. fat makes you fat. Right. And so what a lot of people will do is they'll wind up eating a ton of veg and then protein and then they're still not eating enough fat and they there are some gurus out there that would call that keto even though they're still eating 50 to 100 grams of carbs a day they're all veggie carbs and there are there are gurus who say you don't have to count green veggies you don't have to count the carbs did you say that no i never said that you, no. you had one no. video though i did yeah a long time ago i had one video about the seven keto vegetables you can eat all you want and i actually said in the description this does not apply to everybody it's only for beginners but yeah yeah and uh if i had to remake that video i would probably word it differently maybe you shouldn't i might re i might remake it hmm. yeah i don't know what do you so think? not eating enough fat yeah do not be afraid of fat fat will not cause a heart attack or a stroke it is good for you your brain is made of fat. Your nerves are made of fat. Every cell membrane of every cell in your body is made of fat. But what about saturated fat? Isn't that going to clog my arteries and give me heart attack and all those things? No, no, no? it's not. I've got a few Is there videos. an article that has been published yep. that says that yes. by some important Yes, multiple, place? multiple articles and multiple videos talking about those articles are out there for you to find. So don't be afraid of saturated fat. Saturated fat is the fat we've been eating as human beings for at least a quarter of a million years. But, but not all fats are good. That's right. Yeah. And let me just say this. The American Heart Association just recently published a review paper. That's what I was talking about. That said, hey, don't worry about saturated fat in your diet. It, do, it doesn't look like it increases your risk of heart attack. Who said that? The American Heart Association, their journal, said that. And uh, you probably haven't heard that from your doctor. You probably haven't heard it on, on CNN or Fox or MSNBC because for some reason they don't want to talk about it. I don't know why. I think maybe it's because all of their uh, sponsors who pay millions of dollars to advertise, they want to make stuff out of wheat and sugar. And, and it, their stuff doesn't have saturated fat, so they're not really interested in telling you, hey, it's okay to eat the pork chop. <laughs> Every time I hear someone say pork chop, the episode of the Brain Bunch goes in a pork chops and apple sauce. Who said that? I think Wayne. I don't know. One of the Brady's. Wayne the one, Brady? What's that? Was there What's a Wayne? Name? I don't know. Uh, you, that was a long time ago. Are you, you're, you're talking about Wayne and Garth? No. The Brady Bunch. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Wayne. Bobby, Greg, Peter. Which one? I don't know. Okay. So when I say that not all fats are good, what we're talking about is seed oils, processed oils, uh, Crisco, yeah. canola oil, vegetable oil, all those. There's so many processed oils. And even olive oil has gotten a bad reputation lately. Yeah. Olive oil, uh, and it, because it's adulterated so often, it's very expensive to squeeze olives in Italy, put it in a bottle, put it on a, a super um, cargo carrier, and bring it to the U.S., and so the manufacturers are happy to add a little touch of canola oil or soybean oil because you can't really tell. You can't even really tell unless you take it to like a biochemistry lab. That's the only way you can tell. What? <laughs> Everybody's saying it's Peter. See, they knew what I was talking it's about. Peter? Okay. Take that out. <laughs> <Wayne>. <laughs> I That's good. I'm like, Wayne Brady. He must have been on just a few. He must have been a guest star. <laughs> I don't remember him. <laughs> You know, Wayne Brady. No, no. I don't know why that's so funny. Okay. So, yeah, the olive oils, you have to be really careful with buying them yep. because they've been. Even avocado oil. And and avocado there's evidence oil that avocado oil has been adulterated. And that's part of the reason that Nisha and I, over the past year, 
we just pretty much come to just save our beef tallow and save our uh, bacon grease. grease and just use that it's, because we made it. We know yeah, where it came it's from. It's essentially free, too. We're not having to buy more of it all the time yeah. because when we cook, we render our own fat. And we're going to do a video about that this week, actually, how we keep our how we melt it off and how we store it and all that good stuff. Yeah. So you're basically getting the fat for free and you can store it on the counter. You don't have to refrigerate it. You know exactly where it came from. You know there's <clears> no additives. It's just meat grease and it's so tasty. We've actually started being like, we don't ever cook in it because we prefer the flavor yeah. over olive oil and avocado oil. Oh yeah, oil. yeah, yeah, I really do. And I haven't cooked with coconut oil in two years, three years, I don't know. Me either. Yeah, I just don't have any desire for the, uh, the fruit seed oils anymore just yeah. over them we're not saying you can't use those we're yeah. just saying be aware yeah. that there could be additives in them and maybe do some research into the different brands what brands you can trust obviously it's probably going to be the more expensive ones which yeah. brings us back to making your own fat yeah make cooking. your own fat no. yeah absolutely so what about calories what if somebody in all their life they've counted calories and try to stay in a calorie deficit, and they come to keto, how might that get them in trouble if they try to keep portion controlling and calorie counting and, and not eating too much, not overeating? How might that cause problems? Well, it can cause all kinds of problems. Uh, it can cause the hair loss yeah. issue that a lot of people see. Uh, you could stall out faster. Nope. Uh, it can suppress your immune system. Nope can suppress your mental system. You can get really down in the dumps and feel like yuck. It can slow your metabolism, which 100%. is kind of the opposite of what we're going for right. here. One of the beautiful things about the ketogenic way of eating is you get to eat until you're comfortably stuffed. And every time I say that, it triggers somebody. They're like, no, that can't be right. This is a diet, damn it. You can't eat till you're comfortably stuffed. Yeah, you can't. If you're eating the right foods, if you're eating on the spectrum of the proper human diet, you get to eat until you're comfortably stuffed. We just had ribs and brisket. Did you push away before you were comfortably stuffed? No. Nope. I sure the hell did. <laughs> I ate until I was like, that's it. I'm done. Yeah. Now, that's real food. We're talking about whole one-ingredient yep. food. So steak, all the meats, eggs, yep. um, broccoli even. But, I mean, you can still overeat broccoli. The main thing that you can't really overeat is meat. Yeah. For most people. Every now and then I hear somebody is overeating meat. But that's, like, super rare. And I feel like at some point that's going to go it'll back go the away. other way. Yeah, exactly. Away. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we all come to keto with, with eating disorders or with M, we've been taught rules of dieting and eating that are just wrong. And sometimes we've been taught by our mom or our grandmother or a teacher we, we, we idolized at school. And that stuff or almost becomes like a religion to you. Well, a superstar too. Like you watch, or, yeah, you watch some, up uh, uh, Paul Dean or somebody, and you're like, yeah. oh, okay. But that doesn't mean that that stuff is not wrong. It's wrong. And so one of the good things about keto is you never push away from the table hungry. If you're hungry, you need to eat more meat every single time. And, and when you start to push away from the table, say to yourself, self, are you full? And if, if you're not, then eat some more meat. If you're full, then go ahead and have fun. Or get busy and do something productive. Yeah, we don't snack anymore. Of course, look, we're pretty far into our keto journey. We've been doing this for a few years. In the beginning, it wasn't this easy. We're not saying that it's not a process. It is a process. It is. Yes. In the beginning, we snacked. We ate way more nuts than we eat. We hardly ever eat yeah. nuts down now. We used almond flour in a lot of uh, recipes. We don't really do that that much anymore. So it's a process. Like yeah. you're not just going to, well, I mean, you could, I guess, but yeah. most people will start using products, replacement ingredients, those type of things, and then eventually clean it up and end up with one ingredient foods as yeah. their main food source. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. Another very common keto mistake is to snack constantly. Mm -hmm. That's a very common. And when you first start keto, you may need to do that because that's your old pattern of eating. You may need to start keto with three keto meals and with snacks, keto snacks in between. And then, but slowly, I promise you at some point, if you want to keep making progress and keep losing fat, the snacking has to cease. And keto makes that easier than any other, other diet I've ever heard of because you're eating so much protein and fat, you stay full and satisfied many more hours after a meal. So you don't need that snack two hours later but you may still be in the habit of doing that. 
Right. And yeah. So when you first start keto, you may need some fat bombs in the fridge. You may need some nuts in the in the car for the drive home. But that's that's not always going to be your life. Think about those things as tools and not actual necessities. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly what yeah. I was saying. Yeah, and uh, Dr. Robert Sivis, a good friend of ours, who just had a beautiful little baby. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, if you don't follow Carb Addiction Doc, you need to go talk, uh, talk to that guy. But he says that snacking is always an emotional event. And the more, when I first heard him say that, I immediately in my head disagreed. I was like, what? No. Oh. And then the more I thought about it, the more I'm like, no, he's 100% right. You, you never snack because you're truly hungry. Never. You're, you're snacking because it's habit, mm -hmm. because you're bored. Or you're doing some form of activity, like sitting in front of the TV, mm -hmm. or you're at a basketball, football game for your kids. Right. Or you're like, well, not anymore. We don't go to the movies. Yeah. But if you're you bored. Movies, you're tired. You didn't sleep good last night. Uh, you're mad at your spouse. Because they were being mean to you right before the Facebook Live started. Hi. Yes, he was. <laughs> but those are emotional events. Those are not reasons to consume nutrition. But we've been taught our entire life, oh, honey, you fell down. Here, have a cookie. Right? And so we, we've been trained to think of snacks. No, we need those. But you don't need those in the long run. Maybe at the beginning you need them, but I promise you, once you stall out on your fat loss or whatever your health improvement goal is, one of the first things to look at is, do I really need to be snacking? Do I need to? And then also, this is another great place for the companies. You're always trying to make a buck, which is fine. That's human nature. But keto snacks, just that just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Well, everybody wants to do it. Yeah. That's one of the number one things I get asked is, what do you snack on? What do you use as a snack? Right. For some reason, nobody wants to start a, a sheep farm because guys out there, entrepreneurs, if you're looking to make some money, start a sheep farm, start a cattle farm, start a chicken farm, sell your keto brothers and sisters eggs and, and, and lamb chops and ribeye. That's what you can sell us. Don't be trying to come up with this cheap and easy keto snack that you can make a billion dollars off of. Come on. Help it's us out here. It really is. And I know it's hard work and it's much easier to just knock off a keto snack and then sell it to a bunch of people who don't know better. Be careful with the in moderation thing because in moderation is basically it meaningless. It's it meaningless it, because it means nothing. You can't. What does that even mean? Yeah. How much is in moderation? How little is in moderation? And a lot of people do that. And before they know it, moderation is every weekend yep. Here, and yep. then two times a week. And yep. then before you know it. Yeah. I've eaten good all day, so now I'm going to have whatever at yeah. night. I only smoke crack in moderation. Yeah, only every one to seven days of oh, what movie is that from? So the point is. This is 40. <laughs> this is 40. That's right. What is this? Yeah, is 40. really good. I know. I love it. So oh, here's, the, here's the problem within moderation. And I know you meant that with good intention, but moderation comes from the front of your brain from your prefrontal cortex, from your, your thought and your willpower, that's always going to lose to the back of your brain, the reptilian part of your brain, the part of our brain that's been around the longest, that, that it's all tied up with habit. You ever started a bad habit and it's almost impossible to break despite willpower? That's because it's wired back here. Your hunger, your breathing, your heartbeat, all that's wired in the back, back here in the oldest part of the brain. This part of the brain can never overcome that. Maybe eventually, but not, not right now. This part's going to win every time over this part. And so willpower in moderation, just, you know, uh, set limits, all that stuff's going to fail. It's just going to fail every time. And so if you're one of those people and you set rules and then you just immediately break your own rule, I, I do that. Some people can do <laughs> yeah. but I don't call yeah. it, what do we call it? Uh, abstainer and moderator, yeah. right? Yeah. But it's very hard like i said to maintain the maintaining the moderation thing it gets easier and easier to rationalize like you said that this is still moderation even though it started right. out once a month and now it's every night yeah yeah exactly so don't let your the front part of your brain try to trick the back part of your brain because your your uh, hind brain is going to win every time <laughs> snacking is an emotional event Angel said, I didn't have glue in moderation. Yeah, I sniff glue, but only in moderation. Only every now. <laughs> only in days that end in Y. 
So what about salt? Mm. All of our lives, we've been taught to limit salt. Salt's bad for you. Don't salt your food, et cetera, et cetera. Right? What's wrong with that? It's a lie. It's a big, fat lie. Now, if you're still eating the standard American crap field diet, you probably need to limit your salt because you're so inflamed, you're holding so much fluid that's holding extra salt that you might actually uh, cause higher blood pressure if you eat too much salt. But one of the beautiful things that I love most about keto and carnivore is that you get to eat as much salt as you want. If it doesn't taste as salty as you want it to taste, put more salt on it. Now use quality salt, not the 100%. umbrella girl salt. A lot of those salts at the supermarket have microplastics and bad stuff in them. So make sure- you And sugar. And sugar. Make Some sure. salt has sugar in it, yeah. not a joke. So there's good quality pink Himalayan salt, Redmond's Real Salt. There's a lot of good ones now. More and more as the health craze gets bigger and bigger. Thank God. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> but keep that in mind because <clears throat> sometimes salt isn't really salt. And then the iodine situation in the salt also, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Well, the, so the Umbrella Girl salt says it's iodized. But the problem is, is there's even if it had as much as it said it has in it, it's still not enough for, for optimal human health. And then also iodine can sublimate out of the salt after the salt sit in the warehouse for six months or a year. There's no iodine in it. And so if you tested the salt that's in your cabinet right now that says iodized, it probably has no iodine left in it. <clears throat> and that's why we try to go out of our way to get iodine in our food. And then just to be sure, we also supplement with a little iodine drop. But uh, yeah, the salt situation, it's just ridiculous. And uh, you may have heard of a huge corporation called Cargill. They're pretty much in charge of all the salt that, that Americans use. And they, there's microplastic in the salt, there's nanoplastic in the salt, there's aluminum in the salt, and most of the salt has dextrose, which is just a, the English term for glucose, which is sugar. Yeah. What's another one? Well, we talked about snacks, but you've got one that says too many keto sweets, so you want to talk about... Yeah. No, we, yeah, actually. Because that can apply to yeah. sweeteners in general. And we all, well, a lot of us yeah. drink coffee every single day and yeah. add sweetener to it. Yeah. And so any sweetener at all, any of them, from sugar to honey to agave to stevia, monk fruit, erythritol, xylitol, they're all going to raise your insulin a little bit because of something called a cephalic phase insulin response. You taste something sweet on your tongue. And you actually, did you know you had sweet receptors? Not only on your tongue, the back of your throat, in your right? esophagus, yeah. and in the upper part of That's your stomach. That's so crazy. So, and, and she used to say, "Well, dogs gulp their meat; they can't even enjoy it." And I, I thought, hmm. I looked it up. They have taste buds all the way down to their stomach, and I was like, "I wonder if we do." Looked it up. Sure enough, we have especially sweet receptors all the way down. And so that 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 sweet taste that you can taste not just here but all the way down is raising your insulin because your body thinks sugar's coming and it's getting ready for the honey or the berries or whatever it was a hundred thousand years ago that would taste sweet like that. Some people can use those and it doesn't matter. Some people can't. The other big thing about keto snacks is the, the, sure. the is the nut flour, right? We talked about the sweetener, but the nut flours, some people can eat a, a few almonds every now and then. And it's okay, it doesn't really slow them down. But if when you eat a keto brownie that's made of almond flour, that's about 20 or 30 almonds that's they're, that's ground up. And for some people that will stall their weight loss and they'll actually get inflammation from the ground up nut powder. You talk too fast about sweets. There's other things. Oh, we okay, we'll go back to sweets, honey. Veto me, pull me back. Well, I was just gonna say, even if your blood sugar if you test your blood sugar and your blood sugar is fine yep. and your insulin can still be affected yep. by that. But also it's a mental stimulation as well for a yep. lot of people. Even the keto sweets will trigger the overeating thing. And before you know it, you're doing the same thing with these sweets that are yeah. keto friendly. Yeah, Cause you're still getting that dopamine. Kick. Right. Cause you're getting the pleasure sensation from it. So be careful with that too. Thinking that, Oh yeah, I'm still in ketosis and my blood sugar is okay, but will it stall you because you ate 10 of the keto Oreos instead of two, which is the serving size on the yeah. keto Oreos, yeah. that kind of thing. I hear a lot of times that people who have been on their keto journey for a long time, 
did fine on the keto sweeteners and then had to give them up because it was triggering the overeating more yep. than anything and Very stalling common. them out because they were eating too many of the sweets yep. and increasing the insulin response, which was stalling them. And the sweet taste is that harkens right back to the snacking. The sweetness is always going to tie in with your emotions from when you were a kid because that's what we were given as treats, right? Uh, only Beckett Berry is the only human child I know of who gets ribs or scrambled egg as a treat. That's his treat. And so, yeah, so he's not going to, when he grows up, he will not be hardwired that a sweet is a sign of love because he's we've, we've yet to give him anything sweet. So he's lucky in that respect. But I ain't, and she ain't, and you probably ain't. You probably got all your life. You got, oh, here's grandma's lemon pie. But he loves food. He loves food. Nope. He yeah. woke up from his nap today and was screaming bloody murder. And I handed him some brisket and he shut up immediately. It was like, <laughs> he, was like, he, oh. he, was like he was like, is there more? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, yeah. it's not that he isn't pleased by food. He is. But it doesn't take something sweet yeah. to make him happy with his food yeah this next keto mistake i think people are wising up to this i don't hear it nearly as much as i used to and that's exogenous ketones right. yeah I, I i think there are still a few people oh, out there still somebody trying to today sell about prove it yeah and so if your goals for keto are to lose weight to, to burn fat and to improve your overall health and you're just a normal person Exogenous ketones are a complete and utter waste of your money. You do not need them at all. Okay. They're not actually putting you in a state of ketosis. They're just putting ketones in your blood and in your urine, but you're not actually in ketosis. And so you could literally eat Oreos and drink orange juice and take your exogenous ketones and then pee on your stick. It's going to show that you're in ketosis, but I promise you're not. So there are a few key uh, places where exogenous ketones might help, but if you're trying to lose weight, they are a waste of money and a waste of your time. So if somebody's already sold you some, they're not dangerous. Go ahead and use them up, but don't cancel your subscription because they're a waste of money. And that's the two. We have a little. Okay, boom, boom, boom. That's the line one. Topo Chico, twist of line. Pretty good. Oh, not drinking enough water. Yeah, let's talk about that. Dr. Brady doesn't believe in this. Yeah, and so every healthcare guru from, I think, Richard Simmons, he was probably one of the very first, but I'm sure there was one before him. You've got to drink this ungodly amount of water every day to help you lose weight. Some have actually said it'll flush the fat out of your system. Some have said that your, your, your tummy will be so full of water you'll have no room for food. All of that stuff is hogwash. None of that's true. If you're thirsty, you drink, just like I just did. I was thirsty, so I took a drink. Drinking a certain amount of water is never going to help you burn fat. It's never going to help you be healthier. It's not good for your kidneys to drink water when you're not thirsty. Uh, there's actually research about that. that it, it, you can get something called water intoxication and throw your electrolytes off if you drink water when you don't need it. I mean, that's really hard to do. Yeah. So, yeah, but if you're thirsty, drink. I'm not saying don't drink. I'm saying if you're trying to, oh, I've got to get this quart of water in before 10 a.m., that, that's, that sounds like an eating disorder to me. Don't do that. There's no and point. And you're just going to, it's inconvenient because you're going to have to go to the bathroom like yeah. every 25 minutes. Right. And so then again, you're, you're, you're trusting your willpower to overcome your brainstem, which is in charge of telling you, like, if you get truly thirsty, you will drink toilet water because you've never been truly thirsty in your life. But if you ever were in the desert for three days with nothing to drink and you came upon a, I'm not talking about a clear toilet bowl either. I'm talking about a little murky one. You would drink it dry. Because that's how strong this part of your brain is. But forcing yourself to drink water, thats a, you're trying to make yourself do something that's not physiological and normal. You can't. That's not sustainable. There's an exception to this rule. If you're breastfeeding, you do need to drink water. Yeah. But I've never had to force myself to drink water. Mm -hmm. I am constantly thirsty. And that means she needs to drink. Constantly exactly. thirsty. I remember yep. when I heard the first night when we got home from the hospital, I woke up yeah. and my mouth was stuck. 
<laughs> like stuck together. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, how many hydroflasks? The big hydroflasks. <laughs> I probably drank seven of those a day yep. for like three yep. months. And I still drink a lot of yeah. water. And we'd be talking just like this. She'd be fine. And she'd put Becky on the breast. And literally 10 seconds later, she'd be like, can you give me some water? It was just you like the, like the desert. Yes. Just dry up. That's the sign that you're truly thirsty and that you should drink. But yes. just trying to force because some guru on Instagram said you need to drink two gallons of water a day, that's dumb. And that's not going to help you lose any fat whatsoever. Yeah. I don't track how many liters a day I drink. I just drink. You don't track your water? Oh, I forgot I need to put my water in. Yeah. A lot of people have those. Um, Water bottles that are like by 9 a.m., by 10 a.m., by 11 a.m. That's, like, that's oh, a I'm drinking like, disorder. Yeah, I've never yeah, done that. Yeah, that's dumb. But I go through <clears throat> the big bottles of Topo Chico. I don't even, I don't like these because I go through them in like 15 minutes. Yeah. So I carry around the big liter bottles with me. Another big uh, keto mistake is not minding your electrolytes. Almost every adult on the planet is deficient in magnesium and potassium, but... They're eating the standard American or the standard Western diet. So they're very inflamed. They're holding anywhere from five to 25 pounds of water that they, that's unhealthy for them to hold, but they're holding it because they're eating so many carbohydrates, it keeps the glucose and insulin high. So they hold all this extra fluid. That fluid contains electrolytes. So when you go keto, how many of you guys have experienced this? In the first week you pee off five to 25 pounds of fluid, depending on how Some heavy you are. Some people really do. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. And it's very common. Anybody goes keto is going to at least lose five pounds of, of water weight. And that's, and a lot of people say, well, that's not really weight loss. That's just water weight. Well, yeah, you're right. But the thing is, I was holding five pounds of water inappropriately. Right. Like I'm happy that I'm not holding that five pounds of unhealthy unnecessary water that was making my heart work harder. I'm glad that water's gone. Yeah, you're happy about it, but it but can with cause that, some issues with the fluid shift. Yeah, with that fluid shift, out into the toilet go your, some of your electrolytes because that's the way your kidneys work. And you can't just pee out pure water. There has to be electrolytes in there. And so we try to eat. I've got videos about magnesium-rich foods, potassium-rich foods. And then we talked earlier about you get to salt your food as much as you want because your taste buds are connected to this part of your brain. They're going to tell you if you need more salt. But we use keto chow electrolyte drops. Uh, there's also Relight. Red, Redmond's has one. LMNT, they're very tasty. Uh, Ultima, there's yeah. many good alternatives to the Gatorade and the Pedialyte and all those things that you think are actually electrolytes, but really they're sugar. Yeah. <laughs> And you just use this directed. There's, it's yep. perfectly safe to use them. Uh, if you're scared because you're on some sort of medication that interferes with potassium, then just talk to your doctor about it. Absolutely. And just clear it with them before you start, you know, yeah. messing up. Yeah. But my favorite is keto chow electrolyte drops because they're just electrolytes and water. But the Relight dry, uh, Powder by Redmond, that's pretty tasty. I like LMNT. You like LMNT? It dissolves better. Uh, yeah, Redmond's, you have to really stir it. I actually use the cof coffee frother. Yeah, coffee froth frother. <laughs> you, 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 you know that thing. Yeah. Yeah. But it, once I get them mixed up, they're really tasty. Yeah. But you, you need to think about that because you're not holding 20 pounds of extra fluid to store a bunch of uh, extra electrolytes in. So you think about your electrolytes. Our ancestors 200,000 years ago, they drank river water and mud puddle water, which are very rich in electrolytes. But we don't do that anymore. We drink this kind of water, which doesn't have a lot of electrolytes. And that's why we add electrolytes back into our water. It does have minerals. Yeah. This one does. There is mineral barely. water. Yeah. Is it really barely? Barely. Yeah, yeah. there's question. not a lot of minerals at all. But, I mean, it is mineral water. They're not misleading. I still prefer it over regular water. Oh, 100%. I love mineral water. Absolutely. What else do we have over here? Is that one side or two sides? No, it's one side. It is one side? Yeah. Dairy. Oh, dairy. Let's talk about dairy. Dairy yeah. is my favorite subject lately. Yeah. Because Go. it's one of the most misleading things to keto newbies, I think, because yeah. you come into keto and you think heavy cream is keto, and it is, and cheese is keto, and it is, and you, those type of things are keto foods. But and let me preface this by saying we both love oh, the, yeah. love dairy. Obsessed. 
love dairy. It's a problem. So this is not like, well, I never liked dairy anyway. It's, no. We ain't those people. No. Okay. But for some people, that can be the cause of your stall because you're eating a lot of cheese, a lot of heavy cream, and those things may be holding you back because you are sensitive to them. Yep. There's some diagnoses that um, are particularly, particularly, yep. there I go, I got it, sensitive. And guess what one of them is? Hashimoto's, Hashimoto's. thyroiditis. Yay. And so if you have Hashimoto's and you're stalled or you're having symptoms still or you just don't feel as good as you think you should, try taking dairy out. I know. Yep. I'm having a hard time myself. Yep. But that is one of those foods that kind of gets – a pass and a free for all and for some people it's just not it's just not <laughs> yeah and i i freaking love a little bit of coffee in my heavy cream right love that okay but if i do that i will i will start to put on some pounds in the middle and i will start to have a little bit of rosacea flare back up so there's three things in dairy there's the sugar there's the protein and there's the fat three macros right it's never the dairy fat that's causing the problem. And that's why anybody, even someone who's lactose intolerant, they can eat ghee and butter. That's fine. Nobody has a problem with the fat. It, but everybody, every adult has a problem with the milk sugar. You, even if you don't think you're lactose intolerant, I promise you, you're having a reaction. You're having inflammation somewhere in your body. It may be your joints. It may be your gut. It may be your skin but you're reacting to the milk sugar if you're over the age of seven, because that's when all of us, over two thirds of the population of the planet can't drink milk after the age of seven without paying for it. Now, the amount you pay may not be a big deal. You may just get a little patch of eczema or something like you don't associate that with the dairy, but that's what's causing it. Now, the dairy protein, and here's where it gets dicey. The dairy protein is not necessarily bad for everybody, right? But but there are amino acids in dairy that are more insulogenic than other amino acids. For some people, it really seems like when they even eat full-fat fermented keto cheese, heavy cream, and stuff like that, the, the dairy protein raises their insulin enough to just stop their fat burning. And it's sad. It's very sad because it happened to me. But that's just how it is. You're making me sweat. Are you? Is it getting hot? You're too hot. I'm, I'm hot blooded. <laughs> I got the meat sweats. Sorry. Another thing is, I feel like dairy uh, for some people is addictive and a trigger food. Mm. I could totally eat an entire charcuterie board by myself. Yeah, which would be way less bad than eating the entire pack of Oreos, yes. but still not good for some people. For some people, that's yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, and there's isn't there an actual specific thing in cheese that is addictive? Yeah, there, there. Cheese, some of the cheese, some of the protein in cheese, and definitely the sugar in cheese can activate uh, your pleasure receptors. Yeah. No doubt about that, and have opioid-like effects. And for some people, it does not seem to bother them at all. They can take it or leave it. For other people, it seems to be quite addictive. The dairy, yeah. There's 2,400 people watching this oh, live. Oh, hey, guys. How you <laughs> doing? That. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, wow. Well, we must have picked a good topic tonight. Yeah, it's a good topic. So, like I said, that's not for everybody. Some people can eat dairy, and it's okay. Yep. Or you can eat dairy for now, and it's okay. Yeah. But three to five years from now, you may have to right. tone Just it down. Keep in mind, if you get to the point where you're like, I'm literally eating a carnivore diet, and I'm stalled or I'm gaining weight. It could be the dairy. It's probably the dairy, damn dairy, yeah. And so what I've tried, decided to do is I'm just going to use dairy in moderation. Right. That was a joke. Ha, 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 Because that's never going to work. I'm gonna, that was an awful laugh. I'm, I'm gonna so get sorry. <laughs> Where did you get that? I think <laughs> Wayne, Wayne Brady used to laugh like that. How you doing? Yeah, so when I get the heavy cream container... Like, I'm just going to go psh, like that in my coffee, you know, psh, just a little. Psh, psh, and then I wind up going. Psh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so there is no moderation for me in heavy whipping cream. I either do it or I don't. Because if I do it, I'm going to have a little coffee with my cream. 
I'm gonna get a really cute tablespoon to put by my coffee station so that I am forced to put a tablespoon. Because I know I'm like, that's a tablespoon. I've never it's thought of using it. It's probably not. <laughs> I've never thought of using a spoon for my cream. Yeah, but that it's way I idea. am aware. And it doesn't take much. And I know this because I've literally just put a splash of cream in like just a little. Mm. And it totally makes the coffee. Mm. It's it's, it's fine. fine. No, yeah, that's a good idea. Because if I'm pouring and I and I pour too much. You can't take it out. It was a, but it was an accident. Oh. I did not mean to do that. Right. It was an honest act, but it's still in there. And, but if I had a spoon, that's a good idea. Yeah. And just a and tablespoon, if it's and that's cute, it. Then I'm more likely to use it. So like a pumpkin. <laughs> Can we have a football shape? <laughs> you don't even like football. I like playing football. Well, whatever. I'll go outside and play so tackle. Anyways, right that's now. a good way to keep yourself in check because I'm all in it. Like, yeah. I give myself a lot of credit. Oops. Okay, I'm a hundred percent sure I'm putting more than a tablespoon. Whenever I make a video and I'm like a tablespoon, I'm like. Ah, uh, whatever, eh, whatever. Probably a little more than yeah. that. Yeah. But yeah. All right. So well, just we'll, keep that in mind, guys. What about some comments? We got any questions, you guys? If you have a question, we we've been talking and not looking. Retype your question, and we'll see if we can't answer a few. Love you, Elise. Elise says she loves us. Aw, thanks for the super chats and for the stars, guys. Thank you very much for that. Um, several people have said that dairy was what was stalling them. Yep, it's very common. And it, it that's on, on the surface of it, that sounds like, how does that make sense? Dairy is a natural food. Here's the kicker. We've been eating meat as a species for 200,000 years. We've only been drinking dairy for about 4,000, 5,000 years, according to the archaeology. So that is milk, drinking milk other than our mother's milk when we're a baby. I'm talking about after you're the, at the age of five, six, seven, when you're weaned from the breast, human beings never drink milk their entire life. Only up until about 5,000, 4,000 years ago, then we learned how to, how to uh, raise cattle and get their milk. But that's when it started. And so we have not been drinking milk the entire time like we've been eating meat. So meat is a much more natural thing for us than drinking dairy. And I think that's why some of us have, have developed strategies to cope with it. Others of us have not. Here's a good one that really we should have talked about. Okay. Uh, does bulletproof coffee in the morning break the overnight ah. fast? Has butter and cream in it? A yep. lot of people think that bulletproof coffee is like magic yep. when you first come to keto. And when you first come to keto, for some people, it, it is, is kind of magic. Yeah. yeah. But, so let's first of all say, what's in your bulletproof so coffee? So he has butter and cream. Okay. So remember I said earlier, the, the milk fat, the butter, the ghee, that's nobody's problem. Uh, butter and ghee barely raise your insulin level at all. They don't taste sweet. There's no amino acids. There's no sugar. That's not going to, that's going to barely raise your insulin, which does not break your physiological fast. You're still fasting. Okay, now if you eat a whole stick of butter, you can't really say you're fasting. But if you put a teaspoon or two of butter in your coffee and froth it up, gee, gee, that's, in my opinion, that's an acceptable bulletproof coffee. Let's call it keto coffee. Cause, we, yeah, we don't like yeah. to call it bulletproof coffee because that's a brand and you don't need that yeah, brand. Yeah, it's it pretty costs expensive. $50 a bag and it just blah. Whatever. It's not even good. I don't like yeah, it. You didn't like it at all. I hate it. Yeah. Uh, MCT oil is also an appropriate mm -hmm. fat. Yep. Now, when you start putting sweeteners in there, or that's... Or heavy cream. What well, do you put cream in? Yeah, yeah. So... I think that some people say you can put about a tablespoon and it's Okay. I think it depends. I, yeah. But it depends on yeah. each person. So <clears throat> even like when you hear these rules, you need to take it with a grain of salt because this may or may not apply to you and you need to self-experiment. Yeah, exactly. And she said a grain of salt and that's exactly right. So for my, my, when I'm doing my best keto and feeling my best, my standard morning coffee is black coffee with a, probably a teaspoon of butter and a shake or two of Redmond's salt. real salt. That's when I'm rocking and rolling and feeling my best. And then she leaves the heavy cream out, and I'm like, well, I'll just put a little splash in. <laughs> and then I accidentally put in Oops. half a cup. Yeah, and so, but but uh, butter's never the problem. Salt's never the problem. It's either the protein in the heavy cream, or if you're using other junk, it's the sugar. Yeah, 
but the bulletproof coffee in my definition is is pure fat with your coffee plus or minus salt and i really don't think you can put sweetener in keto coffee because the sweetener is going to raise your insulin enough to break your fast and i know i'm sorry i'm sorry that you you love sweetener in your coffee i understand i used to i couldn't drink coffee if it didn't have copious amounts of sweetener now i couldn't drink coffee if it had sweetener in it this is a great point, David, which is basically what I just said, is that you need to do a self-experiment. N equals one, that's <clears> what that means, that you are experimenting on yourself because we're all individuals. We all have different metabolic issues, autoimmune issues, age, sex, yep. all that stuff. Stress levels. Came from different places. If you're a midnight's nurse or a day's nurse, like both. Totally different Like, world. whoa, yeah, they're all just world. completely different people. Yep. And your eating habits are going to be different and just all sorts of things. So just because something is, we say probably will work, doesn't mean that it exactly will for right. you. And if we say it won't work, that doesn't mean that it won't work for <clears throat> some people. Some people are lucky. Some people are 21 mm -hmm. and have no health issues and can eat mug cakes, keto mug cakes every night and not affect them but we are not those people unfortunately no, hi guess who wants to say hi the little boy <gasps> baby. No, baby yes he is a baby oh, no. he what you got oh he's got his chicken oh that little chicken come here to me Hello. come here to me ah oh, baby beckett say hi say hi he's eating chicken right now he don't want to talk with his mouth <laughs> Uh, if you're new here, this is our baby. He is 10 months old and he is a keto boy baby. He eats lots of meats, a little bit of veg every now and then, mostly breast milk. Well, I don't know. He's about 75, 25 breast milk to real, to real food now. He's ramping up the real food here lately. Yeah. He, he actually, you can tell, and he, he knows the sign. Yeah, he can food. sign for food <clears throat> and for milk. Yep. And he can blow kisses now. Can you blow kiss? And he's fixing to start walking. He took like three or four steps in the past few days. Look, he keeps he's, attempting. he's kissing his chicken. <laughs> mm. Give me that chicken. He does it with both hands. It's so funny. Give me that chicken. Don't take it away from him. We want him to scream. Oh. Hey. <sighs> Anyways, he's doing very well. He's 28 and a half inches tall. He's off the growth chart. And he's pretty smart little baby. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hello. No. Yeah. Mama. He'll say mama sometimes, but. And dog. Dog. Woo. Don't you. Oh. What are you doing? I'm trying to. There. Okay, pick a question. Uh, what spices are okay? That's a really good question. Mm. I think as long as they're just spice, <laughs> no sugar, pretty much all of them are game. I haven't found, have you found any spices that bother you? Well, you have to be careful. Some spices have sugar in them. That's what I, yeah. If it's got sugar, it's all. No, I have to look at the Boom. Um, but so far, yes, spices and make it along fine as long as they're quality spices. But we have friends, Amber O'Hearn, Michaela Peterson, um, who's somebody else? I think I think uh, Peter Ballerstab. They can't do spices. They do meat and salt. If they get into the spices, they start to have inflammation. And so that's another place where you get to experiment. Try some spices. See how you react. If they bother you, don't eat them. If they don't bother you, then enjoy them. I can use salt, pepper, all the spices, they don't bother me at all. What? You get this chicken. Goat. It's right oh, oh, we got the turkey and the goat. Mmm, look. Meh. Meh. Boom. That was a bad turkey, wasn't it? That was a good day. Oh, man. Is keto for kids okay? 100%. This is a ketovore right here. Uh, for dinner tonight, he had he brisket had uh, brisket and some ribs. He had some ribs. He had a little piece of pickle, a dill pickle, and that's, that's it, it, right? Yeah, and then he topped that off with some breast milk because yeah. he's a, a baby human and he should drink milk get from his mother. I got the goat. I got your goat. Let's take one more good question. Right, let's do it. 
Talk ain't no turkey car. <laughs> <laughs> no. Now, so, Pedro, you want me to get Pedro in here? He can call up a turkey. We'd have turkeys looking in the window if he started doing it. Uh, let's see. Somebody asked about gout. How do you prevent gout? I have, keto? Yeah, I have a YouTube video about gout and what actually causes it. What actually causes gout is yeah. eating too much fructose, whether it's from Coca-Cola or orange juice or eating fruit. If you are predisposed to gout, eating too much fruit will give you a gout flare-up. Alcohol and then eating too much sugar and keeping your insulin level high. Go watch my YouTube video about it. Keto is perfect. For, for helping you never have another gout flare-up for the rest of your life. <laughs> he is such a baby. Hey, you want my goat? What's wrong with you? Goat. What else? What else, Mommy Cat? Um, again, the cutoff to buy a Summit ticket is to not at midnight, unless we've already sold 3000 then it would have already cut off. Um, because... Like we don't have time to send out that many t-shirts and stuff to people. Oh my gosh. Wow. Uh, if, if we still have tickets available, you can find information at phdvirtualsummit.com. The link is in the description, up here on Facebook, down here on YouTube. Um, that's the main thing. So if you haven't got your t-shirt yet, it's coming. Obviously, there's a, that's a lot of t-shirts and we, don't, we can't send them all at one time. They come out every day. You'll get yours as you can. If we don't have your size t-shirt, you'll get a coffee mug instead. Or if you put you don't want a t-shirt, then you'll get a coffee mug instead. You'll get all the information for the summit sent to your email on Tuesday, the 8th of September. So make sure you're watching for that email if you've already bought your ticket or you're going to buy a ticket. And then from then on, you'll get all updates to that email. The email that you use to sign up, that's where everything's going to go. Check your spam. Make sure it's not going to the spam folder. Yeah. They'll walk you through everything in each email. Um, before the summit, you'll get a instructional email, how to do it, how to register, like get into it, how to test your internet, all the troubleshooting, and there'll be a help desk to ask questions. We pretty much made this as user friendly as we possibly can. Obviously, this is our first time doing it, so there may be some <laughs> glitches, but there shouldn't be very many. Yes. I think that's it. Whoops. All right, good deal. Thank you so much for joining this evening. Feel free to share this video if you think it will help one of your friends do keto right. Uh, thanks for the super chats. Thanks for the stars on Facebook. Tomorrow night, Tuesday at 6 p.m., we'll be live. If you didn't get enough of us tonight, we'll be live in our private Facebook group. You can get access to the group by being a Facebook supporter or becoming a patron on Patreon.com. I think there's a link in the show notes. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. Think it's going to show his booty. We'll see you next week, guys. See you next time.